Hello everyone, it is Tuesday around dinner time here, apologize for the late one, I think tomorrow's will probably be late as well because I was at minicamp and that goes longer than OTAs because they start later and blah blah blah, you don't care. But minicamp was cool, a um, little more revved up than OTAs, there's no question about that and I, I can't report a ton of what we saw but encouraging again and, and I will give you some stuff as the week goes on. Um, two-parter as usual today. Here's one thing that I just retweeted that I found really, really interesting. And then, frankly, this the second half of the show, I want to talk about Stan Saverin. I just really do. Um, but anyway, the first half of the show. This is interesting to me. And it's very much something I believe more and more in the league. Is So listen up. We have now 20 seasons since the most recent NFL realignment, you know, changing divisions, all that stuff. That's 20 years in the books. These are the only team finishes that have not yet occurred. The Eagles have never come in third place in the NFC East. Yeah, who really cares? <laughs> I mean, frankly. But how about this? The Lions in these 20 years have never come in first place in the NFC North. You know who else has never come in first place in their division? The Cleveland Browns. Never once had a first place finish in 20 tries in the AFC North. The flip side of that is the Patriots in the last 20 years have never come in last place in the AFC East. Not surprising. Although that could happen this year, but who knows? We'll get to that in a minute. And your Pittsburgh Steelers in 20 tries have never come in last in the AFC North. So there's only five things that have never happened in 20 years. The Eagles have never been in third place. Who cares? The Patriots and Steelers have never come in last. The Browns and Lions have never come in first. Now, where I'm going with this is, for example, a year ago, I looked at the Seahawks and thought, they're going with Geno Smith or Drew Locke. They're going to pick in the top five. Brutal. Awful. And what I'm saying is coaching matters and that organizations and culture matters. The Patriots look dismal right now, but do I think they're going to win four games and bottom out and for the first time in 20 years come in last in a really good division? Maybe I still might pick them there because the other three teams are really good. Or, hey, could the Steelers come in last in the North? They could, but it hasn't happened in 20 tries, just like the Patriots. And wh where I'm really going with this is less Seahawks, Steelers, Patriots, certainly the Chiefs and the Ravens fit that mold, too, of just coaches and staffs that know how to win in this league. I just believe that very strongly. But the Lions, the Browns, and the Jets. A lot of buzz around those teams. The roster looks better. Aaron Rodgers is going to New York. You know, the, the Deshaun Watson's going to come back. You know, nice offseason for the Brownies. A lot of buzz around the Lions. Restore the roar. Great. But basically, in my lifetime, those organizations don't win anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when in doubt, I think my ripe old age of 50, you come to the conclusion that it's kind of winners and losers in this league. And I'm certain sometime in my lifetime, the Brown, Browns, Lions, Jets will win a Super Bowl, and maybe even they'll put a dynasty together, and I'll eat these words in two years. But just don't ignore the past. I mean, it's 20 years since alignment, but it goes back further. I mean, the Browns, I think, or the Lions, I think, have like two playoff appearances. You know I mean? The, the Jets... Had a little bit of a good stint, but what have they done since Joe Namath? You know, I mean, the Browns are the same. What have they done since Otto Graham and Jim Brown? You know, like, that that's my only point, you know, that count on history to show you some things. And this is just a 20-year sample. Never to come in first for the Lions or Browns. Never. In 20 tries. Never to come in last for the Patriots or Steelers. In 20 tries. There's only four spots there, folks. You know, you would think... I'm not saying it should be 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, but you would think it happens once, you know, for these teams. It doesn't. So, all right, take a quick break here and then come back on a little more somber note.
So, I, I hesitate to do this in the podcast, but I noticed that DK has a lot of Stan Saverin stuff up on the site, and really the whole Pittsburgh sports culture needs to address it because he's firmly on the Mount Rushmore of NFL, or not even NFL, just Pittsburgh media people. And not only is he a colleague to me, or was, but he's also a friend. And I have the most respect in the world for the way Stan does business and as a person and being on the air with him. And I was first exposed to Stan Saverin when I was a teenager. I don't know what exact years they were, but I fondly remember in my kitchen, you know, as a teenager, shooting Nerf hoops while my mom's making dinner every night. Myron Cope's radio show was on for two hours, I think. And then Stan followed him. And this was at night. And my mom hated that this transistor radio in the corner of our our, uh, kitchen, sitting on our microwave, had talk radio going during dinner and after. My dad had it on because he loved them. And I loved both those guys. And I adored listening to Myron and, and all that and Stan after that. And it was on for hours just about every night. And I remember I'm probably 15 or 16 after listening for years or so, got the stones up to call in, you know, like, and I was petrified, you know, like, man, I can't, I, I, I'm so scared to be on the air. And amazingly, I'm on the air for hours a day now, you know, I mean, it's like funny to me that, you know, I just mentioned I'm just turned 50. And so this was 35 years ago, scared to death to be on the air. And of course, Stan won't remember that, but I brought it up to him since and he found it funny. And, you know, like that was the first time I was ever on the radio. And really, some of the first times I was ever on the radio was 120 every Friday. It was I was a staple on Stan's show for well over a decade. Maybe it's even two decades now. But at 120 every Friday, Stan and I talked football and I've done a lot of radio, a lot of podcasts. I adore being on the air with Dale, but it was the one I looked forward to the most because it's 15 minutes at the end of the week, Steeler games either coming up or it's who knows what's going on in the league. And it was just very comfortable and it just was very, very fun to do. And he made it that way because he was such a professional. And I've gotten so many compliments on that radio hit and, and how much fun it was and people have gone so far as say boy that was my favorite Steeler segment of the week and you know very very kind of of all those that said that but it had nothing to do with me it had more to do with him and just knowing his audience and his guests and setting you up to succeed I mean just a ultimate assist guy you know I mean carry the puck and dish it off the I was putting in empty netters you know what I mean um, I also found out, you know, after we bought the house I'm in right now in St. Clair, it was a year or two after that, and I'd go walk the neighborhood, get a sweat going, get my heart rate up. Stan lives in my neighborhood, you know? I mean, he lives way less than a mile away from me, right up the street. I mean, not right around the corner, but really, really close, very, very walkable. And late in his life, you know, I mean, I invite him over a few times and stuff like that, but late in his life, I offered to, hey, let me go get you groceries. Let me send my son up to bring you something. What do you need? And he always turned me down. You know, he was just proud and didn't want to get old. You know, I mean, he, which brings me to the end, you know, that he, he worked until the end. I, I would never compare myself to him. He's on the Mount Rushmore, as I said, but I can't imagine not talking football. And up until last week or the week before, he was still on the air as much as he possibly could be and was very much about his job and, you know, loved what he did and was exceptional at what he did. And whether you're a, a roofer, an accountant, a lawyer, a doctor, or whatever, I felt like Stan was in the top 1% of the world of the person being matched to his profession because he loved it. He never was going to retire. I feel that same way about football that I'm going to talk about as long as people let me, you know, whether I get paid or not. And so I understand it. And I would look at him too, just from a professional standpoint and think, I can't imagine having a daily talk show 
that's hours long when there's no Steelers news, the Penguins are well out of the playoffs, the Pirates are stinking the place up in July or whatever, and nobody in the league, nobody around here cares about NBA and they're over too, you know? But he could talk tennis, he could talk anything and just was such a professional and I really, really looked up to him and very fortunate that I had to have a lot of good times on the air but more so even behind the scenes. I mean, Stan was a friend and someone I really respect. And if I can make 1% of the impact in the Pittsburgh sporting world as he did, I would be honored. So I could go on and on about him. And at minicamp, he was absolutely the story today. Tuesday, Mr. Rooney did an exclusive interview just talking about Stan. And there were heavy hearts at minicamp today to some degree, you know, but I, I looked at it like Stan wants us to talk about sports. You know, if, if he could still had a breath left in his body, he would do the exact same thing. So I, I kind of looked at it two ways today, but it was hard news to hear. And I knew he was in not doing well at the end as all of us do, but I mean, 76 years of really leaving an imprint and touching a lot of ears and people, but especially mine. So, uh, sorry to get sentimental and all that, but he was a special guy and had a good relationship with him. So, we'll get back to talking football as always tomorrow. Take care, over and out. Over and out.